on a comic review. Yep. Hello. As we're going over Ghost Machine, the ash can copy preview issue of everything that's going to be going on with Ghost Machine. And we've been going over a lot of the Ghost Machine stuff, you know, with Geiger and Junkyard Joe. But this, we're not going to just and, and cover that. Um, you know, that universe. We're going to get set up for all the other universes they have coming. Hmm. It is exciting to be on the ground of what seems like a really promising development and a kind of, like, stagnant and controversial comic environment. Like, I don't even follow it all that closely, and yet I hear a lot of the fumes that are coming from that same general direction, so... I will be honest, though, it's not as bad as it was a couple years ago. Okay, well, that's good to hear, at least. Yeah, yeah, because it used to be a lot worse, where they were just having pros change characters left and right, was not a care in the world. Now it's like, no, let's get back to telling good stories again, not just pushing political agendas. Ah, yes, as I, as I always say, make art, not tracts. Exactly. Now, to be fair, I don't know if any of them were doing it intentionally to make trash, but still. Tracks, as in or like track, track, like author track. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah, that. Sorry, it's not like you said trash. My mistake. Oh, well, I think according to some people, what's the difference? Yep. But, but anyway, on to something that I look at this cover first of all. Really good. Look at this cover. Right? We got Ooh, Geiger on the red coat. I really like the design on that front character a lot. I want to learn more her. about her. Yep. Well. Here's the opening of it. We get all the greeters involved. We've been over them. A lot of great talent. Jeff Johns, obviously. Brian Hedge, Gary Frank, Jason Fabach, Peter Tomasi, Ivan Rice, Brad Meltzer, Francis Manipal. So many. So much talent. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and we got, you know, mo uh, good chunk of these stories are written by Jeff Johns. With the different artists, except for these family odysseys. Now, this character here is from the Rook star uh, stories, Rook Exodus, which is not connected to the unnamed. All right. Yep. So, yeah, we have basically four universes. The unnamed, which we are following up in this time. Rook Exodus, which we'll find out about. Family Odysseys, which are two separate different type of characters. And Hyde Street, which is kind of their horror line. Ah, so we got some variety going. That's good. Yep. Now, of course, we go to your name. 25 years from now, uh, we saw him out tonight. there tonight, Grandpa. Out on the horizon, the glowing man. Where does he come from? Who is he? Not who you think. He was a man who became a monster to protect his family. Now the monster is struggling to become a man again. Most of us out here in the wasteland fear him, while a few naive fools pray for his help. I didn't come to fight, please. I'm in trouble. Ah! Wait, 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 wait. If you can help me, I can help you. I can help you find a cure. He is Geiger. Okay, talk. But if I don't like what you say, my dog takes your throat. He will walk across what's left of America to find a cure, killing a whole lot of people on the way. But don't worry. Most of them are bad. Good doggy. Ruff. Sorry, I meant wolf. He's a wolf. Ruff. Or wolves. God, stop grumbling. Now, what's this about a cure? There's another person out there. They're a living reactor like you, but now they're human again. How? I, I don't know. But, but if you help me, I'll help you find him. And you can ask. Well, wait, I'm valuable. I have information. Doesn't sound like it. And about, about the queen, then. She put a price on your head. Did you know that? All the crime, crime wars have. There are soldiers hunting you, too, for what you did at NORAD. And I can help you stay a step ahead of them. There are a lot of people coming for you, Mr. Geiger. Let them come. My family is dead. Now I have nothing stopping me from being the monster they say I am. But but some of them are as dangerous as you, President Grippen, the elector ele and the electrician, Redcoat. Who the hell is Redcoat? I was born in the 13th of, on the 13th of July in the year 19, 1749, but I have an age of days since 1776. Uh, and so I've met my share of notable figures over the year. Benedict Arnold, the only other immortal who managed to survive the revolution. Amassing wealth and power, he gets his grace alighted in my struggle to acquire much of anything. Still wearing the same old ratty coat? Benedict Arnold's an immortal! <laughs> Einstein, I met the little extraordinaire in the fall of in 1892, back when he was unlocking how the world works. Why, yes, Miss and Mr. Pure, I'm blackmail you. Now teach me all about magic. 
Davy Crockett, the man known for conquering the wild frontier, though most have no idea how wild he was. Just ask the Sasquatch, the Northerner. I first came across this sol solemn figure during the Civil War. Twenty years later, I met him again. He'd hardly aged a day and didn't remember me in the slightest, which was for the best given what happened in 1864. Say cheese, Annie Oakley. She's the only uh, person who's ever shot me in the head without repercussions. I deserved it. <laughs> finally, <laughs> finally, this hand a handsome one. Right here is me, Simon Pure, and I love my coat. It's the only thing in my life that's ever fit right. Look the part, and look the part standing here. Do I heroic last stand? One for the history books. I'd have, and I'd have run away if I could. Uh, I could have picked a direction, but I was surrounded. Got my gun on my knee and begged for my life. Shot in the head two seconds later. But I never worried about dying. Not until today. Come on, lads. I'm certain we can work this misunderstanding out. I was a hired gun after all. And bah, I've had enough of old King George as much as you lot. What say we put away our guns, get a drink to wet our whistles, and cheer to America? Please? <laughs> I'm not sure what happened to me between the moment I'm, d I'm dead and the moment I'm living again. Still trying to unravel that knot. But I do see things. You're nothing, boy, like Daddy. I heard you the first time, Father. You never listen, boy. You're going to be here and you're going to die. And the world ain't going to even notice. Just like this bugger. On uh, 7076, I've woken up to find thieves trying to steal my boots. Oi, get your hands off. Ah, he lives. Ni 1845, people are trying to bury me. Ah, he's alive. Saw it off. 1892. But this, this is new. Oh, God, ah, good, he's alive. Let the ritual begin. Bloody uh -oh. hell. Someday life will catch up with you. You do, uh, you do enough bad in the world, it'll eventually come back. Yeah, it did with me, that's why I'm here. You're not that much different, Mr. Geiger. Like hell we aren't. Now stop following me. But the nuclear knight wasn't going to let him go. Geiger was to be his salvation. Of course, maybe it'll be the other way around. See, all these men and women of myths from different places at different times are connected by that. By what, Grandpa? Their stories are ones that begin in war. I see Washington, the rotten bastard, where violence and soldier and forever changes the soldiers who fight it, but also where unbreakable bonds are forged, and where unlikely beacons manage to shine, even in the darkest of times. Wait for me, Mr. Geiger! None of them seek glory. They reject recognition and are a mystery to most. They are the unnamed. And together, without even knowing it, they're all fighting the unknown war. Damn, that's really good. I mean, we've been hinted about the Southwest Red Coat, but now we got more about him. Ooh, yes. And you know that I've liked both the Geiger and the Red Coat stories, so to see them playing off each other, oh, I'm excited for April. The more than Ex one reason. Exactly, exactly. But yep, we got the timeline. Plus, okay, Geiger, we know about. Um, Junker Joe, we know about. Um, the Red Coat, we're now getting an understanding. But then we have the Northerner, who actually was one of the people, when we saw that brief time door opening with Geiger, he was the one with him. Mm-hmm. And then we have, this is the one who's the first ghost. She was uh, President Sarah Nash, the first female president. And basically, she knows that there's some other deep secrets going on. Ah, I like that. Yep. Now, here's Rook Exodus. A struggling farmer from Earth was given a second chance on the planet Exodus, a terraformed world where every aspect of nature is controlled by humanity, including the winged scavengers who plagued his crops. Now called Rook, the farmer became one of the wardens, those who wear helmets capable of commanding an animal species. But when the world engines failed, the power of the wardens fell into the wrong hands. Those who could afford to, uh, to fled, forcing those left behind to choose between trying to escape this war and torn world before its destruction or fight to save it. Ooh. This is your fault. I know it is. It's those pig of yours. Hell, leave them alone, Rook. We wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have found that wreck if it weren't for their noses. It's not their noses I'm annoyed at, swine. It's the other end. And so they smell. Yep, like catnip. You can stop com you can stop complaining in a second. They're about to get a bass. Get him all! <laughs> Little water never hurt nobody. 
You okay, P um, Pumbaa? Just what? And Pumbaa, ha, Pumbaa! Of course they smell worse wet, don't they, Rook? Why do you think I left the helmet on? Damn it. What? This cockpit hinge is cracked. I, and we use it, and we use it, the entire rocket implodes as soon as we hit the atmosphere. Uh, about that. As much as I appreciate the offer to hit a ride out of here, I'm deciding to stay. You stay, you die. You don't know that for sure. And someone's got to stay and watch over my drift. Dire Wolf says there's still, a uh, Dire Wolf says there's still people here who want to build a community, like the corporation advertised. She said if the wardens come together, don't be a fool, swine. Except for you and me, everyone left on Exodus is only out for themselves. Now get those pigs back in line and have them sniff out the next crash site. As soon as we have the parts to complete my uh, my escape rocket, we're getting off this corporate death trap. Wait, where and where did she go, Doctor? I, I don't know. I swear. You lie. Dire Wolf was here. You updated her helmet, covered her tracks. I saw the glitch in my helmet. Crack and clink. Search the lab. Take the tech. The war of the wardens is at hand. Ooh, I like that a lot. Yep. So yeah, we get some of him like like the other wardens. His true name was discarded the moment he was recruited and hired by Better World to leave Earth, become a farmer. Then we have Swine and Direwolf. She's the one you saw on the cover. Ooh, I like her a lot. If you notice though, birds, pigs, and wolves. Hmm. Yeah, just look at that again. Choose your that is, animal. That's a neat idea, world building wise, too. Family Odysseys. Ghost Machine's family unit is full of heart, heroics, and humor. It's a wonderful, vibrant world of relatable characters and extraordinary circumstances, all focusing on the importance of the family, both born and found. So, how's the future? Good news is, it's still here, Roland. Okay, give it to me straight. What are the current threat levels? Uh, is my family in danger? You know the answer to that. Until we can find Vertex, everyone has to remain vigilant. And most important of all, you have to make sure we blend he in, in, in here in the past. Yes, Reggie, I'm aware of our objective. Hey, it's not an objective, little brother. The Time Zone Protection Program is literally your new way of life. We're walking the walk and talking the talk, as they say here. Time Zone Protection Program! Like okay, witness that perfection. is an incredible idea for a slice of life sort of story, since there's a lot of like jokes about like the time travel or police or like. But there is witness protection. It was time. Yeah, that's a really neat idea. And contact me on schedule. You've been logging in late, putting us all here on edge. We're almost at and activated the T two century. Now that wouldn't be helpful for us to keep a lo keeping a low profile. Very funny, Roland. Just be careful, all right? Always. All right, Rockefellers, it's grilling time. Who wants some burgers? Richie? Um, plant-based for me, Dad. Rachel? Turkey for me, honey. Mom? Dad? I love to, uh, to imagine eating brisket, Roland, dear. B and bison, bloody with cherry. What about a burger, Ray? S'more burger, Daddy. And Rex wants extra marshmallow, please. I was working on that, Dad. My star map. Hey, we're in the middle of... There goes my kill ratio. Notice, his parents are playing video games. <laughs> and Daddy, oh, so no more games, phones, jet boots, or star mapping for the next few hours. We're going out for dinner and actually looking at and com com conversing with each other as we eat. You know, like families often do. <laughs> You're I love how everyone just kind of looks at him with this side eye, like even the even his parents, <laughs> which apparently looks like his mom is an AI updated, or she's kept you know through that. Mm -hmm. You're being incredibly dictatorial, Dad. The, the G man's peaked and peaked tonight. Can I get my phone back at dinner? I was finally being your mother at Call of Duty when you so rudely interrupted us. You're, like, you're all neutrino heads. Uh, and all of you neutrino heads, take a deep breath, get in, and shut up. What's everyone in the mood for? Bale's vegan, pizza, stand steakhouse, Thai. Okay, so much for democracy. I believe you need to make a command decision, darling. Did Italian it is. And how come Gammy isn't coming? Uh, her battery was low, right? Need a, uh, need a recharging. Everyone tie in your seatbelts. Roland, what's wrong? And what's wrong? And hang on! What's the rush there, sonny boy? Someone's been following us the last few blocks. Is it Vertex? 
Not sure. Or, or maybe. Going to try a shortcut. See if we... Did we lose them? Nope. Come on. You mess with the Rockefellers. You mess with the best. Boom. Look out. Dad, calm down. Rodney, take it easy. Let me at them. They want a war? I'll give them war. Use the new turbo structures I installed. Right, Roland? We're, go and, uh, we're coming to the railroad crossing. And failing to prepare is preparing to fail. Someone's coming. Dad, it's gonna it's gonna be okay, Ray. I know. Ray, Ray, if they get through me, I'll zap them back to the 25th century. Don't think you're gonna win uh Le Mans in this jalopy. Mr. Mar Martinez! My dad was Mr. Martinez. Call me Tony, por favor. Where's the fire, neighbor? Uh restaurant reservation. Cancel and canceled on them too many times. Didn't even see you behind us. Your father threw a basket at me. <laughs> Guessing at least he saw you and he saw you then. Here, you dropped your wallet in the driveway. Figured since you were heading out, you might need it. And let's grill and get the family acquainted soon, huh? Sounds like a plan. I always got one. Another friendly and determined neighbor. Well, and well, that worked out somehow. And after five fast food, food pit stops, everyone got what they want. Well, and at least we're all together. We're finally sharing the same screen. Aww. And look, Junkyard Joe, which is basically meaning the unnamed are fictional in this world. Ah, I like that. And then we have Warwick, New York. Wakey, wakey. Rup, rup. Top of the morning. I'd rather stay at the bottom of it, Dad. Come on. Up at Adam Rose. Big game today. You can go without me. Ruff, ruff. Been dreamy of your pitch and uh, your pitch lectures, I bet. Uh, you mean more like nightmare pitches. Every batter in the lineup hit a home run no matter what I threw. Don't worry, kiddo. And don't worry, kiddo. Just stay relaxed and you do your best. What do we always say about our national pastime? Respect the rules, respect the empire and their decisions, respect your opponents, and maintain my self-control at all times. Let's, my girl! <laughs> Keep, yep. <laughs> Keep your weight on your on your, your back legs. Swing through the ball. How is that, Pepper? Well, yeah, too much of an uppercut. Full extension. Bats through the zoom. <laughs> About time you hit it hard enough to break them in McCham's windows. Serves them right for always calling the cops about our barbecue. Come on, you need to change out your pajamas. You're going to be late. If you don't get a home run today, don't bother looking for us in the parking lot. Yeah, but if we win, then there is, there's no ifs. You better win this playoff game, Zach. Your father's got a lot of money riding on it. Ah, oh, geez, completely different. Mm -hmm. No better, no better. Hit it, hit it out, Zach. Uh, wait for your uh, wait for your pitch. Wait for your pitch. Got two strikes on uh, on him, bro. Come on, one more blow at the pass. Uh, fire in the hall. Uh, fouls and still and fouls still. Strike two. Damn, that was the fastest heater I've ever seen her throw. Good luck catching up the next one. That must have been a defect or something. Yeah, or something. Step in the box, batter. Strike three. You're out. Nice. Let's and let's tie this up and send it to extra innings. <laughs> it's up to you, Rose. Two outs. Nobody's at, and nobody's on. Come on, Stevie, strike her out. I'm I, I'm putting this pitch over the fence. Bye bye, Mister Baseball. No 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 no. Tie the game. Tie the game. Tie the game. Save the game. Save the game. Save the game. Huh. Holy whoa! You're out. Game over. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Nice game, Rose. For you, yeah. Practice makes perfect. Whatever, Zach. Uh, where are your parents? They're gone. I didn't hit a home run and left the bases loaded when you struck me out. But your team won. Yeah, but we didn't make the run spread. The run spread? Never mind. Gonna rain. Wanna ride? I like the rain. Okay, suit yourself. See you at school then. Yep, see you at school. Looks like I'm walking. Salutations, Sydney. It's salutations, Sydney. Do you wish to submit your monthly report? Sure, but first I'd like to know when I can transfer out. It's been almost no need to and no need to remind us how long it's been, Sydney. Your dedication and patience are greatly appreciated here. If you could simply cut to the chase. Yeah, sure, I get it. You all got lots of plate spinning. The kids are doing okay. Nurture still seems to be winning out over nature, but they're getting older. Both celebrating their 12 B days this year. Some innate abilities are starting to bloom. We imagine you will do your best to assess them. As you well know, a great deal is at stake. Yes, thanks for the update. 
Sydney over and out. To be continued in the pages of Hornsby and Halo. First, there's the Rockefellers. The 25th century, where everything seems to be picture perfect, the dysfunctional and imperfect Rockefeller family discovered her future's in jeopardy. And the only way to remain safe is to reluctantly enlist in the Time Zone Protection Program and escape the Earth of 2024. There they, but so yeah, we basically got that summary. Mm-hmm. And then we get, oh, uh, what? How do you keep the cosmic peace between heaven and hell at well, all within the confines of a small town called Nor in Warwick? Easy. If you're a leader in each side of the opposing forces of angels and demons, you broker a deal that trades Zachary Halo, an angel child and to a demon family, and Rose, Hor and Rose Hornby, a demon child to an angel family, and cross your fingers and an everlasting truth takes hold, and the balance of power remains stable in a good old mutually assured destruction kind of way. Wow, what? I would not have guessed that was the premise, but I like it. As nature versus nurtured, as the age-old battle of good versus evil, is as simple as who speaks louder, the angel on Rose's sh and shoulder or the demon on Zachary's shoulder, as the turbulence and adolescence come crashing down on the two. So, oh! Raised by devils, raised by angels. Yeah. That explains a lot! Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that was the premise, but it makes sense and I find it interesting. Now we got Hyde Street. First of all, look at all this old-fashioned um, ads. Oh, yeah, that's definitely old-timey aesthetic. Rubber mask, ma uh, rubber monster mask with real hair for $1.49. <laughs> These people are stupid. Uh, who? Everyone's sandwiched between the East and West Coast? I don't give a damn about the tax breaks. I've scouted every backwater corner of this state and grown dumber for it. I want to shoot somewhere it doesn't take me 20 minutes to explain to the barista how to foam almond milk. It's killing me! Dallas, Georgia. Hold on, I can't find a hotel. I must have turned down the wrong street. Did you tell the studio that these rednecks don't have room service? Phil? Phil, you there? Aye. Go away. I don't want to, to buy whatever you're selling. Oh, I'm not selling anything, Mr. Green. Oh, God, you're, are you a fan? I can't get a signal. Kill me now. I'd be pleased as punch if you allowed me to show you the way, sir. Last week, I helped a poor old woman find the baby she gave away when she was a teenager. I'm a third-year trailblazer. What? <laughs> All right, piss off, Boy Scout. <sighs> you can't escape it. Because in every town, what do you want? Get lost in every city, up every desolate country road, and in every era, there's a Hyde Street. Dorian, in 1983, Dorian, Colorado. Come on in. I don't bite. We've got all the latest and great. Wait, I got to double check. Um, oh, they don't give a year for this one. Uh, uh, we got the latest and greatest to help you get back to your true self before all that extra you came along. Um, uh, nothing really works for me. Not since I had my daughter. I don't know why I came in. I'm sorry to waste your time. I actually have just the thing for you. Something special for those more difficult cases. It's guaranteed to work every time. All you need is one. Devour. Quality guarantee. What do you want? That's not I, sinister at all. Uh, I don't have anything for you, you dumb dog. Scram! They all end up here, one day or another. They are somewhere, and some we, uh, they are some we want, oh no, and some we don't want. Oh no, it all happens here, which is everywhere. Welcome to Hyde Street. So yeah. What do you think? That is a lot of good stuff. I feel like I've been treated to a nice little charcuterie board of comic goodness. And then, look, Devour was one of the other ones we saw. Mm-hmm. So whatever that is. But yeah, so what do you see about these different universes? I really like how they have a nice range of stuff that can appeal to virtually everybody to some degree or another. Family what, stories, horror story. Yep. Yeah. Slice of life, like you said. Something that's Close to superheroes, but not totally superheroes. Yeah, it just feels like it's like superheroes are fun, but it's like 
yeah, there's a whole lot more that the domain of comics can do, and, and I like how this is, like, it takes the spirit of it, but it gives it, like, a new coat of paint, so where they can kind of break out of some of the, <laughs> the conventions that have come to be expected. expected. Yeah. And being right. able to start a bunch of new stuff means that, yeah, they get to lay down new rules for what they're doing with this. And it looks and, like we've got a lot of neat ideas going here that I want to see more of. And I got to say, Rook, I just realized it's post-apocalyptic without being on Earth. Yeah. Basically, it's like, yeah, it's the world's coming to an end. But again, it's not on Earth. It's on some other setting that makes them to more create the rules that they want. Mm-hmm. That's clever. So, okay, not counting any of the unnamed stories, because that, we've got preconceived notions. So of all the other ones, from Rook onward, which one are you most in interested in? I would... That is a really good question. There's a lot <laughs> of good pickings here of a lot of different flavors. I mean, Rook definitely caught my attention, even from just the cover art of this. The Rockefellers was interesting. Um, Hornsby and Halo caught you by surprise. Yeah, I caught there's... me by surprise, but in a good way. And then, there, and then there's Hyde Street, which is clearly their horror story. Uh huh. And I like me something delightfully spooky. Yeah, which it feels more like Twilight Zone ish, doesn't it? You know, given yeah, this, but that's not a bad place to be, where it's just kind of <laughs> you're wandering into this surreal domain that. And it's just like, hey, you can just wind up for your food, dumb bad luck. Exactly. But yeah, of all of them, ugh, if I had a pick, I'd probably say Rook. I would probably say Rook too, not gonna lie. I get, they all look amazing, but Rook, something about it really like interests me in, on this whole new world. Mm-hmm. I think it's because it's the most different. Yeah, it really is the most different out of all of them. Yeah, I mean, again, not counting um, the unnamed, obviously. Yeah, but it's like, we already know about that one, so that one's kind of the equivalent of a free space on a bingo card. Exactly, but yeah, Rook is the most different because it's set on a completely different world and we still don't know the rules. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, do you know that people can put on masks and control animals, which is pretty damn neat? And the world's coming to an end, it seems, or it's falling apart. But yeah, mm -hmm. when it... Uh, but like Rockefellers, it's more simple in it, you know, like, but clever still. It's simple, but it clever. It doesn't have to be very complicated to be exactly. enjoyable. It's like the equivalent of comfort food. And again, horns being Halo, the fact that we now know the twist that it's heaven and hell, it's like, uh. Oh, wow. Now I really want to see where this goes. The fact that it adds a context and then you realize, oh, that's why his parents treat him like shit and why her parents are being so lovely to her. Yeah. Uh, I feel bad for a uh, Hornsby. Yeah. But yeah, so, yeah. I mean, and the artwork was all amazing all around. Oh, yes, definitely. So, yeah, that's Ghost Machine. Can't wait for it all. And I'm just going to keep on supporting this. This is going to be, but next, besides DC, this is going to, no, actually, no, not even DC. I'm going to buy everything Ghost Machine. Everything. Because, they all look amazing! Yeah, and it really helps to get that support off early off the ground, because that's sort of when it matters the most. Exactly. So yeah, we'll be seeing you guys on the next videos. Take care!